Hi, this is Jeff from S4i Systems, and today I'd like to show you how two developers using Git, RDI, and Better Object Builder can develop uh, a project concurrently. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is create the projects for both our developers. So I'm going to develop a split personality, and I'm going to be Jeff, and I'm also going to be another developer named Spencer. Now I set up Jeff's project right here in RDI already, but I need to set one up for Spencer. So we need to, now that I hosted the project on GitHub, so we need to go get that. So I'm using source tree here as my Git client. You can use any Git client you want. You could use the command line as well. So I'm just going to say new clone from URL give it the path to it, and I'm going to put it in a directory called bobs-spencer. Okay, there it goes. Let's shrink this down a little bit. Okay, so on the left is Spencer's directory, which you can see right here peeking through the the windows here. Here's Spencer's directory of source code. Here is Jeff's directory of source code. This is Spencer's um, git, like view into git. And here is Jeff's. Okay. So now we just have to create the project for Spencer in RDI. So I'll right click, new project, general project, and click next, give it a name. Bob test dash Spencer. Tell it where it is. Uh, yep. Click finish. And here is the second uh, project. Okay. Now we have to set up the build settings. I set up the build settings file for Jeff, but I haven't done it for Spencer yet, so why don't we do that now? So I'll just go to my external tools toolbar button and choose edit build settings. This window opens up and let's, I'll just quickly fill this out. So the name of the system and where will the source code reside on the IBM I? Well, I created some directories here. Let's go take a look in slash build slash bob test. And then here's the, the two project folders. And this is typically how we do it, at least how we do it at S4i, is we build everything from a directory called slash build. And underneath that, there's another directory with the name of the project, in this case, bob test. And then under that, the name of the developer. And you could have, sometimes I have a Jeff, Jeff2, Jeff3, you know, however many you need but at least it helps keep it all organized under one directory. So coming back here, I'm going to say, give it the path slash bill slash bob test slash Spencer. What library should we build to on the I? And I created a couple of them. So we have Bob, Jeff and Bob Spencer. Okay. ran out of letters there, so we got rid of the E. And then the last thing, I just have to tell it where the SSH key is so I can connect to the I. There. Okay. Let's save it. Okay. So we have Spencer's project over here and over here, and we have Jeff's here and here. The libraries where we're going to build objects are empty, and the directories are also empty. Remember, this is on the I. Okay, well, 
I think that each developer probably wants to do a build and get things going. So we'll just come over here and we'll do a push to IBMI and build all for Jeff. Okay, looks like it's building. And then we'll do the same thing for Spencer. We'll just click the, the same button. Okay, and if we come back here and take a look at our libraries, sure enough, oops, that's the wrong library. There we go, Bob underscore Jeff. Yeah, so Jeff has it, Spencer has it, and of course, the source code is there as well. Okay, so everything's been set up. Now Spencer decides he wants to make a code change. So he goes into RDI and he decides he wants to change the key field for this file. And he's going to change it to, from sorting by first name to sorting by last name. So he makes his code change, he saves it to his local computer, and then he wants to test it. So he, he comes over here, he does a push to I and build. Yep, looks like it built, it created the, yep, the logical file and the two items that use it. Okay, so he's, he thinks that looks pretty good and he's going to go back to his Git client and commit his changes. And if the way that source tree does it, it shows it as uncommitted changes. We click on it and we see what changed. Oh, okay. Looks like he deleted this line and he added this line. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's commit it. Okay, and we'll type a little description, change key field. And in this case, I'm going to check this box that says push changes immediately. Um, origin slash master, that's, that's just how Git uh, describes things. We're on the master branch and origin is the sort of symbolic name that I gave to the GitHub, you know, centralized GitHub account for this project. So I'm gonna say commit and it's basically checking in my change, it's committing my change, and then it's also uploading it to GitHub. Okay, well, that takes care of Spencer. Now, over here, Jeff doesn't have this change yet because he's working in a completely, on a, well, in theory, he'd be working on a completely different computer and he's working, you know, with his own code line here. But, so he wants to see if anyone has uploaded any changes. So he does a pull and he brings down any changes that might exist from GitHub. Oh, okay. In this case, he got Spencer's change. Now the author is listed as me, but that's because I used, you know, the, my same GitHub account to push the changes. But you and I know that it was actually Spencer. And we can click on it and we can see the difference. Oh yeah, I see what Spencer did. He got rid of the first key field and he replaced it with uh, being keyed by last. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so I have the changes now on my PC. And now I wanna come over here and I wanna build them. So I'll just go up here and do the push to IBMI and build. There it goes, it's doing the build. Great, I have those changes. And maybe I wanna make a change. I could, oops, I could do that too. Maybe I want to change the RPG module. So I'm gonna come in here and I decide, you know what? I don't think that this should be uh, I don't think I want to use the logical file. I think I want to use the uh, the physical file for this. So I'll save it. 
do my push and build. Uh, looks like I have an error. Let's see what happened. Name or indicator is not defined. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Oh, well, it's not a keyed file. And I can't do this. So this is, this is what happens when you ad lib on a demo. I'm going to put this change back. So we'll save it, and maybe I'll change something else. What else could I change? Maybe I'll change uh, this field name. Instead of being called response, maybe we'll call it responses. And down here, I'll call this responses. We'll save it, do a push and build. There we go. Build successful. Looks good. I want to commit my changes. So I'll do the same thing that Spencer did. And I will do a commit, stage my file. Um, that's interesting. Um, and I'll say uh, fix confusing variable name. And I want to push my changes to GitHub also. All right, there we go. Now, Spencer decides, well, he comes in the morning and he says, well, what changes did people make? So he does a pull. Okay, looks like Jeff made a really important change here. That was confusing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, that's how two developers using Better Object Builder, Git, and RDI can make changes and work on the same bit of code. Um, they each have their own separate source code directories on the I, and they each have their own test libraries where, where things get built. All right, thanks for watching.